Hi, I'm Alric and welcome to the show. I'm so excited about this show today. I was trying to find an introduction, but she needs no introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, I have Maisie Miller on the Alric Show today, Jamaica's iconic top chef. Grace Kitchens presents Creative Cooking, a season of popular favorites featuring dishes for every meal of the day. And here now is today's host. Hello and welcome to Creative Cooking. Today we are going coconuts, the food variety that is. Maisie, how are you? I am great. Um, I'm happy to be here with you today. Let me tell you, Maisie, the fact that you said that yes, you come and sit and talk with me today is such an honor to me and for everybody who works on this show. You know, it's like an outer body experience, literally. I'm I am sitting with, with um, the woman, Maisie Miller. <laughs> Uh, when did you appear on television here um, in Jamaica, in particular creative cooking? That's what we it know. It was 1987. 1987. I joined the company in 1986. Well, I was just two years old. Yeah. So yes, you're old, <laughs> I am. <laughs> no, Maisie, what has been the experience for you um, over the years, or even that first day when you appeared on television? How has it been, the journey? The production, I was a nervous wreck, yeah. you know, I, I was just trembling, but there were people who were really good to me who helped to calm me. People like Faye Ellington and Oliver Samuels, they really were a treat. Mm -hmm. Easton, um, Easton Lee, you know, they really were good to me. As it relates to the response, you know, um, people would say to you, you know, that's how my grandmother made the dish, you know, thanks for that recipe. Can Make sure you send two copies, you know, that kind of thing. So it sort of gave me some, you know, amount of confidence. confidence, of yeah. confidence. But really, I, I remember, and people who, who, who watched the, that pro, the program that by, um, far mm -hmm. would, re, would recall. You know? no, but let me tell you, though, it's like you represented everybody's mother in the kitchen. Everybody's grandma in the yes. kitchen, literally. And great grandmother. And great <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Is, is that the kind of reaction you, you, yes. you, you get when, when you're out in the public and up to this day? Yes, that's, that's true. And I'm, I'm thankful to God. You know, when you see the number of requests that come in for the recipes, you know, what we would do, each of us, because it was a team, yeah. we would walk with a batch of recipes and have someone that just in case you meet people on the way, you know, um, you, that you are able to share. Because they're going to ask you for the recipes and you're able to share. And I tell you too, yes. as we speak about recipes, we also had to carry aprons. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, everybody needs a, a grace. Because especially a cook shop. Mm -hmm. Man, let me tell you something. You, know, you had recipes. Um, aprons that branded aprons that we share. Did you find that people would stop you and ask you how to cook this and how? Yes, to man. <laughs> but, uh, um, uh, 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 to do oxtail, you know, they want an uh, oxtail, uh, oxtail stew peas, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, they ask you for that. They, they'll ask you. For, they ask you to do that. And you just have to have that answer and then and there for them. Right. And they will call you and or leave a message for you. You know, they don't get it to say yes. I tried it exactly as you. You did it, or as you as advised, and that is exactly how it come out. <laughs> no, Maisie, do you do you miss creative cooking? Do you miss it? I would tell you yes, mm -hmm. because because of the response you get out on the road, and I'm talking about when I speak on about on the road, I'm talking about fourteen parishes. Mm -hmm. Cream this mixture until it becomes very light and very creamy, and then you add eggs to this mixture. I'm adding all of eggs. Listen to me. I grew up in a little community that you don't know, you know? And yes. what is that, Maisie? The name of the community is Ty Dixon. Oh, no, and Ty Dixon is in Northwest St. Catherine. Mm -hmm. I tell you now. So I go to, to Yorton. I'm going home and mm -hmm. I, I go to Yorton. And I go through into the, into the Vale of Loida's, Loida's Vale. Right, so right. you're in Rumbar country. And I make a right approaching that building. And I take the road that goes to Monique. So I'm really on the other side of Mount Russell. Mm. So when Mount Russell used to be blocked, you know, you remember those days the truck yes. block road? And so those big trucks would have to veer, travel through my little community. Very, very narrow road, but the surface was good, mm. you know? Um, and people say, boy, what a treacherous road. Or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but that's where I'm from. I went to Ty Dixon. I mean, I started at Camperdown. 
all age school and then I spent about three months there. In the January, I went and moved to Ty Dixon Primary School. What was life like um, down in Ty Dixon with Listen to my parents? Ty Dixon was, it was peaceful. Mm -hmm. People were loving to you. It was a community where, a place where the community raised children. Everybody look out. So if I passed you all 10 times for the day, I would say, good morning, sir. <laughs> you understand me? Doesn't happen anymore. I would tell you, yes, things mm -hmm. have changed a little bit, a, a bit and so, but it, it still happens. It's a very fruitful community. Everything is there. Tangerine, oranges, star apple, you name it, you know. Yeah. And, and, and people share with you. People are caring. People are protective of each other. All right. Now, we take a break. When we come back, we talk more with the lovely Maisie Miller. Show. Welcome back to the show. The achievements to her name are many, but we know creative cooking, and that's what we talk about. Maisie, there are, there are a lot of things you have accomplished over the years. Um, Outside of creative cooking, what are some of those? Well, I, I share with you my first job. Mm -hmm. I, I worked with the Agricultural Marketing Corporation, that's AMC on Spanish, don't know? Yes. yes. I worked there as a field officer. Mm -hmm. And then I taught in the formal system for, for two years. You're I, a teacher too? Yes, I taught yeah. at Kemp's Hill um, High School for a year and uh, primary school for one year. That was prior to going to college. And then where else did I? I worked with Jamaica 4-H clubs for all of eight years. Mm. And what you did there? I taught home economics and agricultural skills. Mm -hmm. So we did the practical theory and we did the practical. And you know, we shared with students who were coming out of the high out of the secondary or high school system, who at the time were not ready to move on to college. Mm -hmm. You know, so we shared the skills with them. And Oh, during that time, oh, I was, uh, I became a, fa a, fest a farm queen. Yes. Farm queen, yes. <laughs> yes, I was, I was, I was the Clarendon farm queen. Yeah. And I was first runner-up in the national competition. But interestingly, in my time at 4-H clubs, I was selected to represent Jamaica 4-H clubs on a professional rural youth exchange program abroad. And one of the the, the, the privileges I had was spending a whole week at Betty Crocker Kitchens, yeah. at their test kitchens. That was an awesome experience, an you know, awesome experience. What was your experience at, at, at Grace, at, at Grace um, Kitchens like? It was family, you know, it was a team and everybody looked out for everybody. It was a case where I help you, you help me on the job. I'm testing a recipe and I say I need constructive criticism and, and people gave you that, you know. It was teamwork and believe you me, it was a wonderful work experience. How old are you now, Maisie? I, mean, I tell you, one of the things about age, you know, mm. is that you see if you die tomorrow morning, mm. it's one of the first things that come on the program, you know, <laughs> date of birth and when you pass. I am all of 67. Wow. You know. Do you know that you look just the way you are now when you appeared on, on, on Great really? Cooking? Thank you. Much. Well, th yes. that's what I can, I, I can, I can, I can recall. Thank you. But rest assured, the 5th rest of <laughs> January, 1954. You know? What do you yes. what do you do to stay so youthful and so energetic? And you're always smiling, Maisie. Oh, thank you. The intentions are clean and pure. <laughs> you know, but That's I it. eat. You know, I eat healthily. Mm -hmm. I I try. I, not claiming to be any perfectionist, you mm -hmm. know, but I I try to have a balanced meal. You know, that protein component, the starch component. The vegetable, the fruits and the vegetables, the amount of water you, you consume, you mm -hmm. know, it does make a difference, you know, you know it, it really. And we try to be calm and peaceful. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Really. Are you happy with your life? Very happy. I wouldn't, I wouldn't exchange it for anything else. There have been, you know, many obstacles along the way, but we will test of, it's test of faith, you know, they come along the way and all you just have to be. Don't worry yourself, don't get excited, just be calm. What has been that biggest struggle in your life or your hurdle in all your years that you had to face it head on? Probably smiling as you're always smiling. And you had you had to overcome that. What is that one struggle? And can I, any? Can I tell you? I, I suppose like for everybody else, there might be many, but one that has that stood out for me 
was not knowing my mother. I, I met my mother for the first time one day before I did my final exam at, at the Jamaica School of Agriculture. How old were you? I was, do the math, I was 22. I was 22. That is 1976, December, somewhere there, right? And don't get me wrong, I was growing up with my father's family. They took me when I was three weeks old. I couldn't want to have, I couldn't ask for better upbringing. My grandparents were a treat, they were a gem. Committed Christian people who walked with God, you know? They were kind, kind to me, but they were kind to the community. They set example. I'm going to talk to you about your grandparents in the next segment, but I mm -hmm. wanted to, to just get back on meeting your mother for yes. the first time, yeah. right? What stood out for you on that today? And what was that moment like for you when you, you were able to look into her eyes right, right. for the first time? She was, I imagine that I'm, I'm standing here and I'm looking, say, at you, but she's coming in a van from behind. And somebody nearby said, your mother in that van. I started to cry. You know and she, the van came and it stopped right beside me. And she came out and she came and she hugged me. And she said, please forgive me. You know, she said, I love you, Mom. please forgive me. I cried for one week. I just couldn't, all in the exam the following day I was crying. Why you know? was she not a part of your life? My mother went to England when I was about two. You know? And sometimes, you know, we really have to understand different situations, you know? She went to England when I was about two. And when she came back was the time I was seeing her for the first time. And after a couple of weeks, she left and went to Canada. She moved to Canada, you know? And so, you know, she going to England at the time, might not have been as lucrative as many of us make it out to be. And maybe, especially as a young girl on our own, um, it might have been trying times. Mm -hmm. And so we all have to understand people's situation. Did you understand it? After a time? The fact that she came and said she was sorry, um, I, 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 I understood. What I am, um, the truth be told, I don't think my, my mother could have done the job that my grandparents did. You understand? And so we all have to understand. Did you maintain a relationship with her after that? I maintained a relationship with her. And can I tell you, she passed recently. And, and it was trying time for me. But family on both sides stood by me, you know, and I really, I'm grateful to them. They, it really was a little much. My Canadian visa had expired. And as from the moment I realized she wasn't aware, I wanted to go to visit her. And sadly, I got the visa on the, a week after she was buried. You know, and so I, and, and um, tears are a language only God understands, you know. Um, I was really shaken, really shaken. But the truth be told, my family stood by me. Yes, my, fam my entire family, cousins, my brothers and sisters, my father, you know, um, my children, my friends, my friends stood by me, the grace team, you know, yes, man, they call if there's anything that we can do, you know, that sort of thing. And you realize that what friendship may, who are really your friends, you know, but it was, but with time, I am, the process is healing and, is, uh, and I'm hoping in the not distant future, I'll be able to go and see where she was laid. You know? Thank you very much, yeah. Nancy. Right, we take a break. When we come back, we continue our conversation with the beautiful, beautiful Maisie Miller. All right, let's learn a lot more about Maisie Miller, apart from the fact that she is the chef, the mother, the grandmother of cooking here in Jamaica and across the world, literally. Now, Maisie, let me get into your life a bit. 
<laughs> are you a mother? Say it again. Are you a mother? Yes, man. All of three, I mean, three, I would tell you, adorable children. Yeah. You know, and, and um, I would want to tell you five. I have three children, mm -hmm. one son and two daughters, but they have two other sisters and they, they really are a team. They're a, you know, it's a bunch. And I can't, I couldn't go between that five. Yeah. They really are so close and I'm just so thankful to God. And were you ever married? Yes, married and I'm separated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, How I long am. was your marriage for? All of, I never do much. So, so, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> no, maybe, no, for about 16 years 16 or so. Years. Oh, 16 years or so, uh -huh. yes, you know. And, and, you know, like, like I suppose I call marriages, mm -hmm. it had its strengths and its weaknesses, right. you know. And um, I suppose if, you, if there comes a time when you really can't get along as you would, should have. I think you really need to separate in peace, you know, and 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 I believe that we maintain a healthy working relationship. Yes, yeah, and, and that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. How about your children? Tell me about your children. Okay, there are like I said, three. My mm -hmm. handsome son mm -hmm. um, is Paul. He's thirty-two. He, he went. They all went to Mapen Infant after so that Mineralites <laughs> Primary. They he went to Denby and Veer Technical High Schools. Ebony Park and Runaway Bay Heart and New Tech. Mm -hmm. That's Paul. He, he is special area was in the culinary arts. So yeah. Paul is trained as yes, as a chef. Um, Vivian uh, and Samantha. They both went to Maple Infant Mineral Heights Primary, Glenmere High School. Um, Vivian went to the University of the West Indies and and Samantha to New Tech. Viv, they both are educators. Viv did science education and Samantha, IT and education. Oh, I mean, it's remarkable that they basically follow in your footsteps, literally, mm -hmm. because you're in the education part and mm -hmm. then you have um, your son who's also a chef. So what are you most proud of, Yuzi? I am, um, you know, I'm proud of, uh, you know, as it relates to the children. I tell you, the examples that were passed on to me by my own parents, my own grandparents and so on. The, you know, those values of integrity, of honesty and trust has been passed on to them from both parents. You understand? Um, did your, grand your grandma um, taught you um, how to cook? Listen to me. Mm -hmm. she, was, she was maybe one of a kind, I must tell you. She, my grandmother taught me to make Chopped, uh, to pick coffee, we, we pick coffee. Mm -hmm. and, and we would always pick the coffee and leave it for the chop coming Monday. But then the, the, what fell to the ground, the, the rat cut coffee, mm -hmm. yes, man, my grandma showed me how to parch that. Yes. Yeah? You, you sun dry that, then you parch that, you sifted that, you understand? No, you sift out that first, and then you, you, you parch it in the Dutch pot. You understand? Mm -hmm. Maybe they wouldn't spoon stirring it. Yeah. And then, man, you put it in the mortar with the pestle, mortar mm -hmm. stick we're talking about, you know, and you pound and you beat. And let me tell you, we always had coffee at home, you know? What about pudding? Listen to me, man. Mm -hmm. It was a tree stone, you know? A tree yes. stone? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So you burn fire the wood fire. Because I really didn't go up and grow up on charcoal. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up on wood fire, you know? So we would use the wood. And then when the fire light, you know, you draw, what the, draw the wood. You understand? Mm -hmm. And so you'd have some coal left there. And you'd put some. So you do the pudding now. And we talk about the mixture in a little while. But you would line the container, the Dutch pot with green banana leaves, my word, and you singe that over the open fire and it quails, you know, and you use it to line the container and then you put a lid on and then you put a metal on top, which is, you know, a conductor of heat and put some more charcoal on top. So you have fire That's on the top, top and fire let button. me Alleluia tell you, in the middle. <laughs> and my grandmother, she would teach me to make the sweet potato pudding and then you would add maybe a piece of yam or a piece of cocoa to that. Do you still make these puddings? Listen to me, man. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't use a three foot iron uh, pot right now right. Or, or the Dutch pot right now. But I put, you know, we use the convenience of, one, of, of an oven. Did she get a chance to see you on TV? Yes, man, she saw me on TV. Wow. Mm -hmm. What was her reaction to that? You know, she said, God bless you. God you know? bless you. <laughs> she said, God bless you, you know. Maisie, after you retire, meant um or, or after you retired from grace foods what were some of the plans that you have 
you know, now that you're retired, what are some of the things that you wanted to do that you, you couldn't get a chance to do while doing a nine to five, you know, and are you doing them? One of the things I'd want to tell you that I'd want to do more of is travel, travel the world. But um, with the pandemic, you know, it is risky. some things, it is some things are risky. But you, the travel you do would be to, 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 one of them would be to improve on your skills. And in my particular case, it would either be a horticulture or a culinary skill. A culinary skill, I'm talking about the Culinary Institute of America, cutting edge. You know, um, there's always something new to learn. And when we learn these new skills, we want to pass them on to younger people. Mm -hmm. You want to pass them to your children, but not all, not confined to your children alone, to other people's children. But, you know, and, and that's how you grow. You know, that's part of, but I really want to write the recipe book, make the recipe book available. Oh, I you started to, working on one? I think so. You know, yeah. I started putting material together. <laughs> Look how uh, yeah, yes, book, yeah. Yeah. those books are going to move mm. like I, I, I'm working on it, honestly, I am. Yes. I need a copy. Because uh, I, I still need to learn how to cook uh, properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing Miller style. Well, Maisie Miller's amazing, but uh, and it's 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 a, it's a Grace Kennedy style. It's right. a Grace Kitchen style. <laughs> yeah. Grace Kitchen style. You know, even when I'm cooking now, and my friends might call, and I'm like, "Hey, I'm in the kitchen cooking." They're like, "Okay, amazing Miller." <laughs> you know, like, literally, well, amazing. You know, Thank you so very much for sharing with us. What is it that you'd like to say now to all of Jamaica, to people across the world? Now, you know, you still walk on the road. Everywhere you go, there's somebody to shout, Maisie Miller. I have to say thank you. Thank you for your support over the years. Thank you that for calling me when there was a sign of weakness. You call and you share your own idea or to say how the recipe could have been adjusted to give you another result. I thank you. You learn, you grow from criticisms. I really want to thank, sincerely thank Jamaicans from 14 parishes and beyond, because we get called from all Dubai, you know. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your support over the years. And I will look forward to, though I'm retired, I still provide a service there. And um, we just want you to continue to, to, to visit our website. The recipes are still available there for you. Thank you. Oh, amazing, you know, amazing. You know. Let me tell you, my I, friend. I, I, when I started the show, I tell you that it's my honor to sit and talk with you. It's, a, it's still an out of body experience. When I get home, I still be living in the moment. I appreciate you so very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you for you your so time. Much. I want to thank Maisie Miller of Creative Cooking, of Grace Kitchens. She's the mother, the grandmother, the great grandmother of cooking here in Jamaica. Top iconic chef. I just remember too that um, you, you got the order of distin distinction. As yes, well. yes, yes, in 2018. 2018, big things. Big things. <laughs> thank All right, you. thank you so much for sharing with us today on The Alric Show. The Alric Show will be back next week. The Alric Show, inspiration, motivation, one vision, hope to one new generation. Together we can live and learn. We're one family on the Alex Show.